Welcome everyone to Zoom into Books. Today, we are celebrating our first year anniversary of Zoom into Books with our Spring Fling Author Celebration. We've had several of our award-winning authors on over the last few days. And this afternoon, we have renowned ufologist, Dr. Raymond Keller with us. And we're going to go to Raymond now and ask him to start by telling us about his career and research in some of his books for today. Well, thank you very much, Kathy. It's always a pleasure to be on uh, Zoom into books. And um, I'm uh, Dr. Raymond Keller, um, the author of uh, five books so far in the headline book series of Venus Rising, a concise history of the second planet. And uh, in these books, I uh, examine various aspects of uh, the, the mysteries related to the planet Venus and life on, uh, life on Venus in, in theology, um, theosophy, astronomy, ufology, uh, mythology, and many other, uh, many other uh, subjects. My, uh, my most recent book is uh, Lady Columba Venus Revelations. And uh, this book uh, deals with Annabelle Krebs, a Greensburg, Pennsylvania native who was born there in 1902 and uh, traveled through time and space with a group of extraterrestrials and a Soviet cosmonaut. This was back in the late 1950s and the early 1960s. So in the course of researching my many Venus books, I obtained Annabelle's notes describing her experiences as well as uh, obtaining her original artwork illustrating her most fantastic adventures. And I organized all of this material, updated and footnoted everything in the process to uh, produce this unique account of her extraterrestrial encounter that uh, took place between 1957 and 1961. And as for myself, my first UFO encounter took place back in, um, in the mid 1960s and I, began to write a series of articles for my local newspaper, the Bedford Times Register uh, in Bedford, Ohio, a suburb in the Southeast side of Cleveland. And uh, I also published uh, in conjunction with Earl J. Neff, the director of the Cleveland Ufology Project, the Flying Saucer Report. And uh, there were articles about myself and um, the Flying Saucer Report, uh, in the pages of uh, the National Enquirer, and as well as uh, uh, there was an article that I uh, recently came across from 1968 from the pages of Raymond A. Palmer's uh, Flying Saucers magazine out of Amherst, Wisconsin. Um, so I've continued to research UFOs my, my whole life, uh, except for the time when I wasn't able to do it in the military. I was in both the Navy and the, um, uh, and the, uh, and the Army as a voice intercept operator in the Spanish language. But uh, all those other times I've been uh, researching and writing and publishing uh, UFO newsletters, uh, articles and so forth. Just recently, Fate Magazine came out with an article that I wrote about a West Virginia contactee from the 1960s, 1967 to be exact. Uh, his name was Woodrow Derenberger. And uh, all the information has never been published before. And um, I was uh, able to uh, obtain this information uh, from my, my own files, as well as, uh, as uh, the files of Gray Barker. Uh, in Clarksburg and uh, put it all together and came up with a very interesting account of uh, his encounter with um, 
a being from a planet called Lanulos, which is about eight light years uh, from from the Earth, and um, the uh, other extraterrestrials that are members of an interplanetary confederation, and um, lots of documentary evidence of uh, uh, photographs, uh, original transcripts, and, and so forth. So check out that issue of Fate Magazine that's on the newsstands now. That's great, Raymond. Um, I know that you do travel a lot um, and that you're always ready to speak to groups. Um, we have a few photos that um, I'd like to put up on the screen now um, that I'd like for you to tell us about these events. Oh, okay. Um, the, the first one in the upper uh, left, I believe, uh, may have oh that may have been in um, Kingwood and uh, that was at the um, uh, Buckwheat Festival. Yes it was. Uh, yes that was one of my first appear uh, uh, public appearances to uh, to autograph books and uh, uh, not too many people knew about me locally so that was uh, that that was a great uh, that was a great opportunity. Uh, this the second one is with the um, on the upper right uh, took place in um, in, uh, in in Clarksburg uh, at the uh, senior citizen um, Christmas festival I believe and um, the one on the uh, the bottom. Uh, left uh, was in, uh, I believe that one may have been, uh, that one may have been in, uh, in Fairmont. And uh, there's a, a, a depiction of me in the middle that was done by a local sketch artist, which I, which I really appreciated about the, the cosmic ray and it has antennas coming uh, uh, coming out of my head. I really appreciated that. I gave uh, I gave him a free book uh, a free book for that. Well, and, Ray, I know that you speak a lot, and we've had a question come through. Oh, okay. Um, I know that this last year of the pandemic has been very different for everyone. Do you have any uh, feel for the facts or information? Have there been more or less UFO experiences or sightings in 2020 than before? Um, yes, there, there's been a substantial uh, uh, uptick uh, that started after Thanksgiving and uh, has continued uh, to this day with more people being at, being at home and not uh, uh, and not being at work, uh, a lot of people are outside uh, in the fresh air, walking uh, uh, near their home, and uh, looking up and taking time to uh, to do things that um, they hadn't had the time to to do before, um, catching up on um, catching up on reading or uh, or just traveling around in the in the countryside. Uh, so there, are, there has been uh, uh, an increase in sightings, definitely. That's interesting. And it seems like through local MUFON chapters, is, is it true that there seems to be more UFO activity in the fall than other times of the year? Uh, yes, I would say that there definitely is. And... Uh, I am a, a UFO consultant for a group in, in Pennsylvania called uh, Paranormal Search. It's located in Harrisburg and uh, they've had to suspend monthly meetings because of the pandemic, but the activities of the group still go on. Um, Ross Wiedler, the di director of the group and um, uh, Tony Puglesi, the uh, uh, vice president, 
if I put together a weekly podcast uh, that they do in the uh, in the area. And if all goes well, they should be resuming activities shortly. But they investigate all kinds of paranormal phenomena that appear to be uh, interrelated, such as uh, UFOs, Bigfoot, um, various kind of psychic phenomena, manifestations, ghost, ghost hunting, etc. And uh, so I'll have more information on that as, to, as time goes on. I haven't read much about uh, UFO activity in Puerto Rico lately. Um, I know there was a big thing about Chupacabra there. Can you tell us about that, what you know about that? Um, yes, the Chupacabra is uh, what's known as a cryptid or an unidentified um, species of, uh, uh, of animal uh, that has been noted to appear throughout Latin America and also in the American South um, southwest and uh, it's um, it's much bigger than uh, it's about uh, uh, one and a half times the size of a, uh, of a, of a wolf and um, it, uh, it 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 uh, kind of looks like it's uh, has uh, spiked hair uh, on top and but it uh, you can see the uh, it, it's it's rib cage and it's a, a very unusual creature and um, uh, it's uh, it it's been known so, sometimes to uh, attack people so uh, in, in some reports in Texas is there a relationship between uh, creatures that have been seen like Chupacabra, Mothman, even the Flatwoods, Mo well, maybe not the Flatwoods monster. Um, but are creatures similar to this seen around the world or are they regional phenomenon? Oh, no, they're seen around the, they're seen around the world. And um, I do write uh, a weekly column on updates on, on UFO sightings and cryptids and so forth that's published with Lon Strickler's phantomsandmonsters.com is one word, phantomsandmonsters.com. And there, there are also links there to all, my, um, to all my books. So all the research that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis and a weekly basis, I publish that online there with uh, with Lon Strickler in the phantomsandmonsters.com. Oh, that's great to know. Um, yeah. let, let's go to the next slide. Okay, I think the, this may be some of your appearances. Would you like to tell us about them, please? Oh, yes. Uh, well, the one in the upper, uh, the upper left is uh, the uh, director of a podcast in, in uh, Canada. And um, and uh, I uh, am currently working uh, uh, with that group in uh, compiling sightings and information from from Canada, and uh, we'll s soon be uh, uh, doing a, a a visit to uh, to their. Uh, their, their home that they've turned into a kind of UFO center. They have uh, five acres of land up there. And uh, I'll have more information on that later. The, the one in the upper right is me at the uh, uh, Philadelphia Metropolitan Museum of Art. And the statue in the background is um, The Birth of Venus. Uh, that's by Heinrich Keller. Uh, who might be a remote um, a relative? Uh, he he uh, traveled traveled from Switzerland to Italy to look at uh, uh, you know ancient uh, temples and sites uh, related to to Venus before he sculpted this, and uh, it's in the Venus room because there's other statues and paintings of Venus uh, there and. Um, it's uh, it's a beautiful um, 
beautiful location. That, that statue was made in uh, 1799 in Rome, and uh, they had to be very careful transporting it to uh, the United States. The bottom, uh, the bottom photo with the bee that was uh, taken in Moundsville, West Virginia uh, by Sherry Lynn. And she's a, a psychic who creates uh, uh, discs, uh, these crystal discs that represent various aspects of the planet Venus. She was with me and this bee landed on my shoulder and stayed there for four hours. And uh, when it was time to go, um, I just said, it's, you know, I told the bee it's time to go and it just flew, it just flew away. That's and amazing. <laughs> so she took a whole series of pictures of that through, throughout the day, including close up ones. It's a very unusual, um, it's a very unusual bee. It was at a, a, a rock festival uh, for kind of hippies. Uh, going well, back to the 1960s and we had a table there. Uh, Sherry had the discs and I had my books. And uh, so that's uh, what, what that was. And then the picture you see on the bottom right are uh, our friends that are in, I think they're, that's in Bolivia uh, or Peru uh, with the um, uh, Louis Martens who wrote a, uh, who wrote a book about uh, extraterrestrials in Latin America and uh, ultra-dimensional beings from higher realms. And I, I worked to translate that book uh, into English. Cool, I didn't realize that, that's great. Um, I think maybe a few of the viewers might not be familiar with the relationship of bees to the paranormal phenomenon. Uh, well, this is a theme that's uh, recurrent through all of my Venus books. And um, the connection of bees to the planet Venus goes back uh, all the way to um, the days of the, the, the Roman Empire. Um, the, the Romans believed that bees were a gift by uh, Lady Venus, the goddess to the uh, people. Uh, people of earth and uh, the Roman emperors embroidered bees on their robes. Uh, this tradition carried over with the, the, uh, the Cathars and the Merovingians and, and so forth uh, down, down through history. Um, there's a lot of similarities too between the orbit of Venus uh, which is and the orbit of the earth which are always in a direct Fibonacci number relationship the higher number of orbits for Venus, which is closer to the sun, exactly matches uh, the next lower number of uh, orbits in the Fibonacci se uh, sequence uh, for the Earth. And then the bees, um, um, the bees do this, uh, this waggle dance in a, uh, in a grand spiral, uh, which is graphed out by a a Fibonacci number. And when you look at certain crop circles, you, you see this motif of the grand spiral that's, that's constantly repeated. The number of bees in any hive will always be a Fibonacci number because of the way that bees reproduce. And these similarities go uh, on and on. Other cultures like the Egyptians, they had uh, Anani, the bee, the bee goddess was part bee and part human, the, the queen goddess of the Egyptians, the bee, bee goddess. Um, for the Sufis in the Muslim tradition of the, the mystics, um, uh, Rumi uh, said that uh, the bees were uh, from the planet Venus along with some other things like pomegranates and so forth that didn't have any, uh, any parallel that were unique. Um, uh, here on the earth, but he specifically mentioned the bees and, and, uh, and angels coming from Venus, of which he said there's always about 4,000 on the earth at, uh, at any one time. And uh, all of these and many more are, are explained in the, 
in the Venus, especially in the first book, Venus Rising, all these amazing connections between bees and the planet Venus. That's, it's so interesting. Um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, this, uh, the one on the left, uh, Close Encounters Between Worlds was a presentation that I did in the mountain lair at West Virginia University on uh, April the 5th of 2016. And the one in the center uh, where I'm uh, seated with the three Venus Rising books, as well as the uh, 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 some various posters. One was from uh, an illustration of Venus from an Edgar Rice Burroughs novel uh, of Carson of Venus. And the, the one in back of me is uh, Botticelli's painting from the Afuzi Gallery in, uh, in Italy, uh, in Florence, Italy, the birth of Venus, the, the goddess coming out of the sea with the shell that, in, that also inspired uh, Heinrich Keller to do that sculpt, sculpture. And then uh, uh, a poster that I made myself with all the planets in, or, uh, in order fr uh, from the solar system um, uh, uh, with uh, uh, ch uh, terminating in, um, uh, in Venus at the, the top. So I, I think I left Mercury out of, out of there. Um, but that was, uh, 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 my, that was actually my first, my very first public appearance. And that was at uh, a MUFON conference in, um, in uh, Southwest Pennsylvania at a, at a community college is where that was held at. And um, then um, these other, uh, the, the picture in the bottom center uh, is myself with Fred Saluga. Uh, we did uh, several presentations together. This was at the, um, this was at the Clarksburg Library, I believe. And um, uh, he would talk about the Bigfoot phenomena, and then I would talk about UFOs, then we would answer questions and also address some of the similarities mm -hmm. and uh, some of the synchronicities with uh, Bigfoot's encounters being associated with, uh, with UFO uh, activity. And uh, the one in the, the upper right is during a visit to uh, Elkins. West Virginia and the the um, uh, 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 taking a train ride while we while we were out there. <clears throat> well, I know that. <clears throat> excuse me. We can go to the next slide now too. Um, I know that your well traveled Ray. Um, actually, we can stop stop the slides now. Um, you're very well traveled. I know you're happy to speak to groups and I know with the pandemic, um, a lot of the authors are doing virtual visits to book clubs, um, conferences, some even do workshops. Um, I know you've traveled abroad. Would you like to talk about your travels overseas? Oh, oh yes. Uh, well, most of my, most of my, uh... My travel is, has been with the military uh, capacity, about two thirds, but the other third uh, was as a civilian and in, as an instructor of English as a second language in different, uh, in different countries. Uh, uh, I was teaching in China um, twice, and then I, I went back there to uh, address a UFO and metaphysical group and um, um, that was very interesting because uh, I went there with Rob Potter from Mount Shasta and we got detained by the, um, the, by the Chinese authorities. And uh, they had uh, actually uh, arrested us and interrogated us and, and so forth. 
and uh, for uh, religious propaganda, so so-called religious propaganda. But when they found out that um, that I only represented me, myself, and I, just my just my books, and not any any cult or or organization other than myself, and they 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 finally let us go. Um, so that was the most uh, a harrowing experience, but uh, I uh, was in Australia working with friends there from UFO Research Queensland and um, uh, published some articles in their publication as well as uh, uh, did some research with, uh, uh, with many of the members of that group. Some were uh, friends of George Adamski, one of the earliest contactees, when he went there in 1959 on a world uh, on a world tour, so I guess I'm following in some good uh, uh, some some good footsteps. But uh, many of the UFO contacts that I've made throughout the years, Jean Duplantier from Canada, Saucer Space and Science, and uh, um, many groups in Latin America, particularly in uh, uh, Argentina, Guillermo Aldenati as the um, director of the largest group down there, uh, and and so forth. Uh, I uh, I'm looking forward to uh, 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 making future trips um, throughout uh, throughout the world. I know that some have even written to you. Yes, uh, they have. <laughs> Try to, to, to find me. So through them, I've made many friends, some in the Basque country, uh, in Spain, and uh, uh, in Italy, and, and so forth. So I'm definitely planning on doing some more traveling as soon as this, uh, this COVID thing has passed. These books have really taken you on an adventure, haven't they? <laughs> oh, yes. I'm, I'm so happy and so uh, privileged and uh, Thank you, and I have to thank you and Headline Books uh, very much for uh, uh, opening the door and, uh, and making all of this, this possible. Because when I was looking for somebody to, to, to publish these books, I knew it was a very unique uh, subject, but um, I saw that, that you and Headline Books are located right here in West Virginia, in beautiful Terra right. Alta up in the uh, uh, the eastern part of the state and uh, had published uh, previously lots of UFO books and books of a metaphysical nature and even an, even a UFO uh, newsletter, which I was actually familiar with, but I didn't really make the connection until I until I looked at the at the website. So I'm very, very happy for that. Well, um, most publishers focus on one genre. Headline Books does not do that. We publish <laughs> fiction, nonfiction, and children's books. Um, Ray is one of our authors who travels, as you can tell from his past experiences. And Headline Books does events all across the United States. The pandemic has put all these on hold but we do have our first in-person event coming up the end of October. It's the West Virginia Book Festival in Charleston, West Virginia. And Ray will be there in the booth with us. And these type of events are the perfect time to get out, bring the family, meet the authors, and get autographed books. Um, we will all be there. We'll have 18 to 20 authors in our booth the end of October. And we will also be in Charlotte, North Carolina for 12 days for the Southern Christmas show in the week before Thanksgiving. And it's wonderful to be able to get an autograph book and meet these amazing authors. Uh, Raymond's books have won lots of awards and uh, we're very proud of that too. Ray, would you like to tell people how they can get in touch with you for speaking or visits, please? 
Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, you can reach me directly at my email. That would probably be the best way to contact me. That way I have a permanent record and can send an email directly back to you at rkeller, that's one word, r-k-e-l-l-e-r, -L -L -E and then just the number one, rkeller1 at mix.wv. dot w v u dot e d u and uh, I uh, I always respond. Uh, it may take about uh, a week or so. Uh, I do get a lot of emails, uh, um, and uh, uh, I do try to answer everybody if they have a question about UFOs, Venus, cryptids, uh, metaphysics, or something. I'll try to uh, answer your question as best I can. Um, I have uh, what's called a Cosmic Rays mailbag, and uh, that is uh, 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 published with, uh, with Rob Potter in Mount Chasta, California. And I go there every year to do, uh, uh, to do a UFO conference. I was there the, the last time with uh, Louis Martens from Bolivia and Omnek Onek, um, the ambassador from Fifth Dimensional Venus. It's amazing what you have done. And I understand that you're going to be on a podcast in Las Vegas. Would you oh, yes, you yes. This that? will be on uh, May the 13th, which is a Thursday from 10 to 11 p.m. on KCOR. Las Vegas podcast with Tim Schwartz and Timothy Green Beckley, who is one of the ufologists going back to the to the early 1950s, an associate of uh, Gray Barker and Jim Mosley. Uh, Gray Barker was right here from West Virginia, uh, from from Clarksburg. That's great. Thank you so much, Ray, for joining us today for this meet and greet the author. Um, we're so happy to have you on Zoom in the books and hope you'll come back again soon. Thank you, Kathy. It's always a, uh, always a privilege to uh, uh, get in contact with all the friends of Venus that are out there. Well, thank you. And for those of us who joined us on Facebook, thank you. You'll be able to watch this video and others on the Zoom in the books YouTube channel. And they'll also be available if you didn't get to see the entire broadcast on the Zoom in the Books Facebook page. So thank you, everyone. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.